had that recurrent dream again. Oh yeah? What was it, my friend? I was having that dream where I was racing down a road at breakneck speed. Very exciting, yes? Yes. Doctor, are you too high on cocaine to listen to me? No, no. While I am very high on cocaine, I am Sigmund Freud, and I am totally toasted up cocaine! Woo! Cocaine, cocaine, working around my heart in red. But as you were saying, you were having your recurrent dream of shooting down the road like a zephyr. Very exciting. Well, yes, there I was in my dream. Shooting down the road like a zephyr and thinking, Perry Logan's done a show called Don't Vote. I have got to see this. Then I realized, Perry must be talking about something that almost everybody realizes now. Neither of the major political parties, Democrat nor Republican, is going to do a thing we want. But this observation is very disturbing to you, yes? Why, yes, it is, Sigmund. I can see why you're such a genius. For example, almost everyone in America wants us out of Afghanistan. Out of Afghanistan? Out of Afghanistan. Don't they know Afghanistan is the place you go to get your butt kicked? Ha ha ha! Yeah, Afghanistan is where you go to get your butt kicked, so to speak. But this is very sexually exciting, do you know? Not particularly, but it occurred to me that America needs a party for people who don't vote. A party for people who don't vote? That's ridiculous. But what do I know? I'm high as a coon on cocaine. <laughs> you can tell neither party has any real intention of getting us out of Afghanistan ever, or really out of Iraq ever. Why, what do you mean? Why don't you know? The Obama administration was trying to stay in Iraq. Is it not trying to stay in Iraq? Yabo, Sigma. The Obama administration was trying to stay in Iraq, but Iraq wouldn't let them. Iraq threw them out, and then, in very Obamic fashion, Obama took credit for getting us out of Iraq. Then, that's very sad. You're kidding my buzz here, Perry. Okay, so I'm having this dream. I'm thinking to myself, well, Perry must be recognizing the obvious. People who don't vote are the smart people. The smart people? Well, of course. If neither party is going to do what you want, why vote for either one? It's only common sense. Well, I feel better. Hi, this is Perry Logan, and as you can see, I'm in therapy. Hmm. Uh, perhaps because I'm being so ironic. Wikipedia irony. Wikipedia satire. Okay. I know, I sometimes, I do like to remind people of my satiric intentions. Hey girls, let Perry tell you about his satiric intentions. <laughs> and his tendency to fluff all his lines. Let me tell you about Perry's satiric intentions, girls. Come on up here on Perry's lap. Hi, you children. <laughs> I like to remind people of my satiric intent because uh, in the world of politics, as it's practiced today, you know me, kind of a weird observer of the world of politics and kind of giving you uh, how it feels to be me watching it, this crazy world. Uh, in case you're wondering what the premise of this show is. <laughs> Perry, so cool. <laughs> well, aren't we having fun? I like to remind people of my satiric intent because as an observer of the uh, political scene these days, I notice that uh, it's kind of humorless. It is surprisingly humorless. Not entirely, but surprisingly humorless in the sense that political people tend not to know you're pulling their leg. Yes, I, I don't know, are there people who don't know I'm pulling your leg in this show? I believe I can explain that. Perry? When I say don't vote, I mean vote for me, candidate for president, 
of the Don't Vote Party. Don't you see? It's a kind of a convoluted, ironic thing. Where uh, it seems to me that uh, when you can see that the major parties are clearly, uh, I, you know, I say clearly, and that's my viewpoint. I'm just giving my viewpoint. It seems to me the parties are almost saying flat out, you know, we are going to cut the safety net. We are going to privatize your schools. We are going to start fracking your neighborhoods so you can all set your water on fire. Ah! Yeah, Americans don't want fracking. You probably don't really want to be able to set your water on fire, to set your tap water on fire, which is like literally the situation that we find ourselves in. It's clear to me that both parties intend to frack the hell out of this country. Both parties intend to stay in Afghanistan and in reality in, uh, in Iraq and many other places. Both parties uh, intend to keep sending out killer drones, which, may I remind you, is strictly illegal. Strictly illegal. Not to, say, not to mention wrong. Okay, so, uh, in, against this background, uh, the only people with any sense are the people who don't vote. <laughs> so, I have formed a party, okay? And we're looking for a vice president, by the way. Uh, would you like to be my vice president? I formed a party called the Don't Vote Party, a party for the none of the above uh, things. And don't worry about me, Perry Logan, really becoming president. First of all, we know it's a little bit of a long shot. <laughs> Secondly, if nominated, I will not run. Well, I guess I am nominated. <laughs> if elected, I will not serve. Hey, I am the president of the Don't Vote Party. And uh, if elected, I will not serve. Well, you could actually do a pretty serious show here on April 5th, 2012. You could do a, a show on uh, can't vote. Not don't vote, but can't vote. As in fact, uh, the entire Republican Party is on a national basis uh, engaging in a war on our right to vote. So laying aside all irony for the moment, this is something that's really going on. This is like serious. It's like, how bad is it when we know that neither party is going to do what we want? They don't care about the environment. They don't care about the cost of the wars and the, the damage, the pain we're inflicting on the world, they do not care. They are going to keep doing it. Obama clearly is ramping it up. He keeps saying he's going to do the right thing and he doesn't do it. In the age of Obama, the only difference between the parties is that the Democrats lie about it. Oh, and they lie so sweetly, don't they? The Democrats know what to say, but they end up somehow doing it the way the Republicans do. Or you tell me, doesn't it seem like neocons are running things? Can I just take a moment to say, doesn't it seem like neocons are running things? Yeah. yeah. This puts the left in a very tricky, awkward, kind of spraddled stance, kind of a humiliating spraddled kind of a spot. You will. Now, all kidding aside, the left in America are in the odd position of defending the status quo. This is something Democrats are not used to in recent times, but Obama's president, the Democrats are ostensibly nominally in control of the government, not that you can tell, and somehow it's as if a neocon were running things, right? Well, think about it. So how weird is it that my fellow lefties and Democrats and liberals and whatnot are defending the status quo? They are defending Barack Obama's record. And I think they shouldn't be, because as I say, he's obviously not going to 
do what we want him to do. It's not going to change in this, if he has a second term, it's going to get worse. According to Perry Logan, Barack Obama is a neocon posing as a centrist Democrat. This best explains his catastrophic presidency and why, after three years of Obama, it seems like the neocons are running things. Hi, sorry. What do you want? Poverty is up. Poverty is up. And it is going up, for heaven's sake. How much more clear do I have to make it? Drone strikes, illegal drone hits on people, assassinations, illegal, strictly illegal. There's no ambiguity here. Uh, those drone strikes quadrupled under Obama, see? So he's going to say the right things, or try, and do what the whole government's going to do. This brings us to me. President. I am like president-elect. Looks like I've got the nomination of the don't vote party. <laughs> How do you get the votes of people who don't vote, who, when you think about it, are simply a little more sensible than the rest of us, Hot, hoping this, this uh, endless din of an election, just as a total through-the-looking-glass election in which Thanks to Citizens United, a disastrous Supreme Court ruling, uh, corporate money has been unleashed in even worse fashion. So we, this might be the worst, like most corrupt <laughs> election ever. So you're thinking, hmm, don't vote. Sounds logical. Well, it does sound logical not to vote, but you know, just to lay aside the mask of irony for a moment. Here, let me lay aside the, the mask of irony. <laughs> I have laid aside the mask of irony to let you know you should vote. You should really vote. I, I, the title is ironic. Don't vote is ironic. I, I thought I'd better say this because political people, they don't have much sense of humor. I love them. But they don't have much sense of humor and they don't do irony. Watch out, if you're laying irony on a political person, they may not know. So I'm laying aside the irony and saying, oh, of course you should vote. But the truth is, the Republicans, oh, they would love my show, perhaps. <laughs> the Republicans might love my show because, you see, they are actively and on a national level uh, screwing with uh, your right to vote. They are screwing with it for the simple reason that they couldn't win if they didn't. It's that bad. Now, I don't think the Democrats are doing that. The Democrats really would prefer you vote. But see, the, the Democrats are now the party that says what you want to hear and lies about it. They are lying because they're going to do, in one way or another, it always ends up being, you see, what the Republicans want. That's the whole story of where we are. It does come down to uh, my theme, which is I want you to feel better, first of all. Aww. I hope you're fine. Of course you're fine. You're watching the greatest show ever. Available on the web, by the way. Oh, oh, the best thing on YouTube. My show, the best thing on YouTube. Thought I'd mention it. I want you to feel better, and you will not feel better if you vote Democratic. Are you kidding? I think most lefties are thoroughly disgusted with what seems to be a kind of a far right, I would just call it a far right Republican administration that keeps calling itself a centrist Democrat, Democratic administration. I want you to feel better. Sorry about the accent. I want you to feel better. 
And don't you see, to vote Democratic is to be filled with angst, pain, dismay, Aww. anger, ennui. Oh, heavy on the ennui. Oh, come on now, to vote Democratic is to be filled with regret, nestling in your belly like a little monster about to burst out? With blood, pus, sputum, crap, ooh, urine. I'm sorry, I went too ready in that. To vote Democratic is to have major gastric disturbance. <laughs> Don't vote Democratic. Not only will it screw up your karma to vote for a war criminal, I'm trying to save you major gastric distress and inflammation of the bowels Ew. and pustules, carbuncles, hickeys, zits, zits. Now, dismay, okay, all kidding aside, to vote Democratic is to f be filled with regret. You could go on all day about the awful bills the Democrats are passing. The Democrats, presumably in charge of Congress for the most part, or partly, you know, it's hard to tell, isn't it? Okay. But I want you to feel good. And I simply can say from personal experience that if you vote for the progressive third party of your choice, you will feel good. Hey, don't you feel good? I feel good. You feel good. Hey, I voted for Cynthia McKinney Yay! in 2008. I haven't stopped bragging about it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh yeah. You will feel better, or perhaps not blissed out. Okay. Uh, to vote but. Democratic is to feel eternal regret, <laughs> okay? It's, it's that bad. And, and I want you to feel better. Vote third party, progressive third party. And some people say, well, you know, Perry, progressive third parties are, are not likely to win. <laughs> well, like I hadn't thought of that. Hey, guys, you know, I thought of that. Uh, Third parties uh, don't affect the political process, usually, by winning. This is like, okay, I know that. A fifth grader knows that, not to be ironic. Uh, people act like I hadn't thought of that. But no, it's not to win. But the more people who vote for a lefty third party, uh, this will, as it has in the past, had an influence on politics. Third parties and third party movements have an influence. I cite the Tea Party. In the age of the Tea Party, you know, the Tea Party are practically running the government. Wow! So you see, to say that third parties and third party type movements have no effect is just a little obtuse, even for a lefty, right? And now, Austin's beloved Perry Logan of the Don't Vote Party. <laughs>
What, Thomas? Did you tell them? I tried to tell them. I tried to be, you know, ironical. Ironical? I tried to use irony. I said, don't vote. I, I did a show called Don't Vote, thinking, you know, the people who don't vote have their reasons, but they are also the kind of people who, if you tell them, don't vote, will vote. Why, Perry, that's positively brilliant. Drugs. <laughs> well, before those guys kind of went off on that tangent and disappeared into the book, we were noting that the people who don't vote these days are, or could possibly be simply accused of being smart and sensible. And they know they're wasting their time. It's a stark case, as I was saying. <laughs> a stark case of the parties almost come right out and say, you know, we are not going to do what you people want. I would say at this point in the Obama age, the age of Obama, love you guy, but in the age of Obama, the only difference between the parties is that the Republicans tell you they're going to screw you and ream you and swipe you most royally. The Republicans tell you they're going to screw you oh, and the Democrats lie about it. Oh, that works. <laughs> you know, I know Obama's going to wind up doing everything the Republicans say they're going to do to most royally ream and swive us. <laughs> most royally ream us and swive us. <laughs> and the Democrats will lie about it. They will say, uh, Obama will say, You know, I'm not going to screw you and royally ream you and swive you to a fairly well, except that, of course, I am. <laughs> they can say what they want. The Democrats now are simply the ones who will say the right things. Obama says a lot of good things. I'm, well, maybe not the first to admit, but I will admit he will say good things, but you see there is no connection whatsoever between what Obama says <laughs> And what he does, <laughs> this is obvious to a child, you know. <laughs> you are stupider than a child. <laughs> you are stupider than a child. <laughs> what am I saying? I'm insulting children. I'm sorry, the parent of the child apologizes for insulting children. They would not be so dumb. Please remind your viewers that there is karma and voting for a war criminal is bad for your karma. 
Obama has signed the NDAA, an indefinite detention bill, into law. Obama has waged war on Libya without congressional approval. Obama has started a covert drone war in Yemen. Obama has escalated the proxy war in Somalia, escalated the CIA drone war in Pakistan. Obama has sharply escalated the war in Afghanistan, secretly deployed U.S. Special Forces to 75 countries, sold $30 billion of weapons to the dictatorship in Saudi Arabia, signed an agreement for seven military bases in Colombia, touted nuclear power even after the disaster in Japan, opened up deep water oil drilling even after the BP disaster, <gasps> opened up deep oil drilling even after the BP disaster? That's right. Opened up deep water oil drilling even after the BP disaster. Obama signed the Patriot Act extension into law. Obama continued Bush's rendition program. Obama may have you on a list of people to be killed. <laughs>